This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Good morning. It's nice to see all of your beautiful faces this morning on this very sunny, summery, hot and steamy day. Let us worship the Lord. The call to worship. The Lord hears us when we call. Come, let us put our trust in God. The Lord fills our heart with gladness. Come, let us sing God's praises with shouts of joy. The Lord grants peace to our weary souls. Come, let us rest by the quiet waters of God's grace. Please stand and join us in the singing of I Love to Tell the Story, hymn number 462. The Spirit of God helps us in our weakness, interceding with sighs too deep for words. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sins. What love you have given us, O God, that we should be called your children. What love you have given us, O Christ, that we should share a table with you. Forgive us when we act as if we were your only children when we do not recognize your image in the faces of strangers, enemies, or friends, when we do not share our own tables, forgetting that we need each other, 
Forgive us, O Christ, maker of peace, and teach us to follow in your way. Hear the good news of God's promise. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. Peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also so with you. Please welcome your neighbors, sharing the peace of Christ with them. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Prepare our hearts and minds for the hearing of your word, holy God. Open us to your truth. Humble us to your way. Amen. The first scripture reading this morning is from Ezekiel chapter 14, verses 6 through 11. Therefore, say to the people of Israel, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, repent, turn from your idols and renounce all your detestable practices. When any of the Israelites or any foreigner residing in Israel separate themselves from me and set up idols in their hearts and put a wicked stumbling block before their faces and then go to a prophet to inquire of me, I, the Lord, will answer them myself. I will set my face against them and make them an example and a byword. I will remove them from my people. Then you will know that I am the Lord. And if the prophet is enticed to utter a prophecy, I, the Lord, have enticed that prophet, and I will stretch out my hand against him and destroy him from among my people Israel. They will bear my, their guilt. The prophet will be as guilty as the one who consults him. Then the people of Israel will no longer stray from me, nor will they defile themselves any more with all their sins. They will be my people, and I will be their God, declares the Sovereign Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace that taught my heart to. 
to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed through I have already come. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. <clears throat> the Lord hath promised good. I can't imagine anyone singing that any more beautifully than you just did. And I'm thinking how well I could sing if I could stand close to you during all of the hymns. <laughs> I was doing really well. I had Judy here and I could hear you and I was kind of hitting the notes. Wow, that was just beautiful. That high note. Wow. You know, maybe a lot of us do it at home when we have the radio going and nobody's around. But Wow. Our second scripture lesson this morning is from the book of Genesis, chapter 6, verses 5 through 8 and 13 through 20. This is the story of Noah and the flood, a story we all know, but it's a story of judgment and, of, and salvation, a story of obedience and disobedience at a time when the people were acting so corrupt and so evil. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. The Lord saw that the wickedness of humankind was great in the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made humankind on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out from the earth the human beings I have created, people together with animals and creeping things and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the sight of the Lord. And God said to Noah, Make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and out with pitch. Make a roof for the ark and finish it to a cubit above. And put the door of the ark in its side. Make it with lower, second, and third decks. For my part, I am going to bring a flood of waters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die, but I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall come into the ark, you, your sons, your wife and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every kind into the ark. 
Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him. This is the word of the Lord. in the country in an older home. It was built in 1892. Never considered myself to be a country type person. I really like the convenience and the hustle and bustle of the city. But we came down and saw this handyman's fixer upper. It had a wraparound porch with beautiful gingerbread, which most of it was hanging on. But it was just a beautiful, beautiful porch. And I really fell in love love with it right then. But Steve Mencho for the realtor said, oh, let me show you the waterfall up the valley. Well, we went up and here's a beautiful, I'm not talking old man's cave waterfall, but it's a beautiful little waterfall and the water then goes behind the property and across the road into Brush Creek. Well, that was it. I fell in love, put on my rose colored glasses We had the kids with us, so we went to Burger King so they could eat, and we signed the papers, and that was 43 years ago. And we still love this porch, which has been repaired, by the way. One interesting thing about the house is that it has seven doors, living room and dining room, two in the parlor, and all of those doors open onto the porch. Then the kitchen, the basement, and the sunroom has a door. Seven outside doors. The house is about 2,500 square feet. If you've ever been to the Ark Encounter, you know how big that is, and supposedly it was built with the same dimensions as Noah's Ark. It has three decks, we just read, three decks, a lower, a middle, and an upper deck. It's about one and a half football fields long. It has three stories has approximately 120,000 square feet, took Noah and his sons over 100 years to build. And let me read you this verse, chapter 6, verse 16, again. Make a roof for the ark and finish it to a cubit above and put the door of the ark in its side. I have 2,500 square feet with seven doors. Noah's Ark is that big, and it has one door. One door. This is the only door through which humans and the animals could enter the Ark. In Genesis chapter 7, verse 13, it says, On the very same day that the rain began to fall on the earth, Noah and his family entered the Ark. Everyone came through the one door on the ark. Others were invited, but only those whom God said would come entered in. Only those who were called entered in through the one door. God doesn't just say, come to me and repent and change your ways and obey me. And if we make a mistake, he says, that's it. I'm going to send the flood. I'm going to wipe you out. That's not the way God works, and we know it. God comes and says, he says, Obey me. Repent and change your ways and come to me. I will make your life beautiful. I want to bless you. Come to me. And he will say it year after year after year, hoping that we will all change and come to him. And that's what he did with the people in Noah's day. But in our scripture, it said they they were evil continually and they never changed. They were invited, but they chose not to change their ways. And then in chapter 7, verse 16, it said the animals going in were male and female of every living thing as God had commanded Noah. Then the Lord shut him in. Now we know there were eight adults, four men, four women. There were lots of animals, birds, creepy, crawly things. And it doesn't say the Lord shut them in. It says, and the Lord shut him in. The Lord shut him. Noah in because he was the only one who was righteous before God. Noah was the one who had faith in God and demonstrated his faith by building an ark at a time when there was no rain to be seen. 
And as the rain begins to fall, God shuts the door. Noah and his family and animals are all saved because of Noah's righteousness. And once that door was shut, no one else could enter. Think how frantic Noah's neighbors must have been in the chaos of the flood. Now, they lived in the desert. They didn't know rain. So I'm guessing when it started to rain, they must have thought, wow, you know, this is really nice, this water falling from the sky. But then it kept falling and falling. It got higher and higher. And their gardens were flooded, and their vineyards were flooded, and pretty soon the animals were swept away, and their homes were swept away, and they were feeling panicky, and they thought, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And then they saw, hey, it's the ark. Oh, they thought, this is the ark that we used to make fun of Noah. We tried to keep him from building the ark, and we demeaned him, and we didn't like him, and we made fun of his God. But the ark is the only way that we can be saved. And so they thought, it's got to have a door, and they started looking for the door. But what did we just read? The Lord shut him in. The door was closed. There was a time when anyone could have come through the door and been saved from the flood, but that time is gone. That time has passed. And those on the outside died as a punishment for their corrupt and evil ways. The ark was a vessel of salvation, and while God's anger was being poured out on the entire world, the only creatures and humans who survived the flood were those who were safe inside the ark who had entered through the one and only door. And just as there was only one way to be saved in Noah's day, there's only one way to be saved today, Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. There is no other way. In the days of Noah, once the doors were shut, God's plan of salvation was complete. The people on the inside were saved. The people on the outside perished. It was as simple as that. In Hebrews Chapter 11, verse 7, it says, By faith, Noah built an ark in the middle of dry land. He was warned about something he couldn't see, and he acted on what he was told by God. The result, his family was saved. Noah lived in a desert, didn't know rain, didn't know flood. God said, build an ark. He did. And because of that, he and his family were saved. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. In John chapter 10, verse 9, he says, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, Peter proclaims, There is salvation in Jesus Christ, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. There are no options on the road to eternal life. The one and only way is Jesus Christ. We don't need to get into a big vessel or a big ark. Jesus is our ark. Jesus was crucified on a cross for our sins, past, present, future. All of the sins of humankind, the one perfect person who ever lived, went to the cross and died for us. And died for us. He was buried, but he rose from the dead. He defeated death, and Christ's victory over death is our victory over death. And because of that, according to the Apostle John, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 11, the testimony is this, that God has given us eternal life through his Son, Jesus Christ. He who has Jesus Christ has eternal life. Amen.
If you will join me now in our affirmation of faith. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Okay, we have a minute for mission from Susan. Susan Dietz. The Presbyterian General Assembly convenes next Sunday in Salt Lake City at 1.30 in the afternoon Mountain Time. So many of you have asked me about my commission to General Assembly. I thought I would take a minute to update you. The Presbytery of Scioto Valley commissioned two teaching elders, two ruling elders, and one student delegate in November of 2023. This is my second commission to General Assembly. I was commissioned in 1985 in my third year as an elder of this congregation. We are representing 86 churches in our presbytery with a total membership of 12,817 people. Our work began in January and picked up speed in March. So far, Zoom meetings, almost daily emails, multiple trainings, and town hall meetings have guided my journey of preparation. I also chose to complete a course in Christian Zionism to deepen my understanding of the Israel-Palestine conversations that are going to be hot and heavy in Salt Lake City. My work with our Presbytery's Commission for Ministry makes me truly appreciate that I was chosen to serve on the General Assembly Ordination Committee, as our denomination focuses on equality so all can feel welcome to answer the call to ministry without judgment discrimination, or rejection. This week, our committee will meet 10, 8 to 10 hours a day via Zoom. We will be working with eight overtures. Commissioners are expected to read and study over 150 overtures before leaving for Salt Lake. As of this morning, I have 40 left. 436 voting commissioners representing 165 presbyteries will arrive in Salt Lake City before Saturday afternoon. Next Sunday, I will worship with Mount Olympus Presbyterian Church in the morning, and then General Assembly will, see, will convene with worship in the afternoon. We have been told to expect 12 or more hours of work throughout our six-day stay. God has given me an opportunity to put my faith work clothes on to serve our denomination. I am more than blessed to be part of the 226th General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church USA. Please lift our General Assembly in your prayers and keep an eye on Steve while I'm gone. You know, I used to hear about people going to General Assembly and I thought, you know, it's General Assembly time. You get on a plane, you go, you have a meeting, you vote yes or no, and you have lunch and have a good time. Who ever knew a 10-hour Zoom meeting I had a two-hour Zoom meeting and my body was screaming at me. I, you know, it's very impressive all the time and effort that you are putting into this. We are very fortunate that you are doing this. I don't think anybody realizes all of the work. Of course, you never do anything unless it's 100%. Some of us might skate, but thank you. Thank you for being our representative to General Assembly. And you always come back and give us an update on what you did and all that. Wow, that's, wow, thank you. Did you want to come up here? Oh, Susan's got an update on the food bank. Susan Barron. We had to open the doors at uh, 4 o'clock because of the heat. It was, uh, it was very rewarding, though. We uh, fed 121 people, 82 adults, and 39 children, and we packed 38 boxes. I want to thank the congregation for all the help that they give us for the food pantry. And you know, I was surprised at the numbers. Whoops, I was impressed with the numbers. Susan said that's not even the largest group of people they've had. 
Wow, that's got to be a busy two hours. Let us worship the Lord with our tithes and our offerings. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Gracious Father, we just praise you and thank you for who you are and all that you do in our lives. We thank you for everyone here today and their generosity and the gifts that they've given this morning. We ask that this money, these gifts, be used to spread the gospel of your Son, Jesus Christ, throughout our state, throughout our country and the world, that one day all knees will bend and tongues confess that he is indeed Lord of all. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. This is the time for us to share our praises and concerns. And I know Barb shared that Janet Pritchard is having a heart oblation, not as quickly as she'd like to because she's still having some problems and really needs prayer. She's had several health issues and is really getting down about them. So we'll all pray for Janet. Thanks, Barb. Okay, I know Susan. Many of you might not be aware, but Shirley Eberst had uh, surgery on Thursday. They found a spot on her lung and it was cancerous. So they did surgery on Thursday, four hours, and she got through it just great. Shelly and I stopped up at the Lancaster Hospital yesterday to visit her. She's doing wonderful, she looks great, and she's thankful for all of those who have prayed for her. So thank you. Thanks. Praises and concerns. Oh. I just want to thank the Lord that he is uh, working in my life, and I know that he is. Okay, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, creator of all, maker of all, 
creator of all animals and humans and plants and trees and the beauty that we see today. We just praise you and thank you. Wow, you're really a creative, creative God. We thank you for all of the good things that you put in us that make us want to go to the hospital and visit people or call people on the phone. Those are things that you put in us that are for the good that we do. And we know you love that when we actually act on those things. Without you, God, we are empty vessels. And we are just so grateful for the love, compassion, the kindness, the thoughtfulness, the generosity that you put in us each day. Thank you for families, dear God, for our families at home, our children and grandchildren, and, and thank you for this church family. What a, what a nice group of people who are always looking for ways to help others, and we know that is exactly what you want us to do. Thank you for all of the people here who go out of their way to make someone else's life nice. Heavenly Father, there are always people that we like to raise up to you today, and, and one of those people is Janet Pritchard, who is really struggling with health issues. And it seems like one thing doesn't take, get taken care of before something else pops up, and it gets to be a little depressing. Be with her, God. Help her with her spirits that she feels better, mentally and physically. Let her in, get into the hospital to have her heart ablation soon that she might be able to feel good and be back with us, a group of people who love her, and we just, we just want her here with us. Thank you for Shirley's operation going so well. And I know just to have Shelly and Susan walk in, it's going to pick up her day before anybody says anything. So I know that was a real treat for her, and I am be happy to hear when she gets home and that we see her again. We thank you for the progress of Garth Geist, who is Vera's nephew, who just continues to do better and better. And it's just an absolute praise to you, God, for the healing you do in people. It's an absolute praise to you, and we thank you for that. We just thank you for all of those things. We pray for Keith Leffler, who is still fighting cancer, and I pray that his treatment is going well. If it hasn't ended yet, that he is doing better, that he is doing well, just getting ready for that new little grand person. I don't know if it's a girl or a boy, but it doesn't make any difference. He will just think it's the best thing in the world, because they are. Just be with he and Rachel and the family. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all of the work and the effort that Susan Dietz is putting into being a member of the General Assembly. What a gift to our church. Thank you so much for that. And I know you put all of this in her and you gave her the motivation to do it and all of the knowledge that she needs, you give that to her. So thank you, God. Thank you. And we will just be praying for her all the time that she's working on it and all the time that she's gone. We pray for her safe trip and a safe return. We pray for Pastor Jeff and Joan, that they are taking care of responsibilities and having a good time and that they will be returning safely. Just watch over them, dear God. Heavenly Father, this weather that you've given us now is summer. It certainly is summer. But, and for a lot of people, it's really hard for them to be out in this weather and hard to breathe in this weather. Just watch people. Watch the animals who are stuck outside and watch over people who have to be out here for very long. Keep them safe. Let them get indoors if possible because it just can, can really be strenuous on a body of people who have asthma or any kind of breathing problems. Father, just watch over them. Thank you for all of the things that we are doing in this church, all of the ways we are reaching out to people. Heavenly Father, show us more. We know there are more. Let us open our eyes to whatever is going on around us. Let us not be so content on being in our own lives that we forget to look and see where we can join you 
in a different ministry, in another ministry. Because we know you are busy everywhere doing things. And we want to help. You put us on the earth here to help. To take care of one another. To love one another. And we just need your help in doing that and showing us where you want us. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who guides us. Let us pray to you regularly, to him regularly. Let us always pray before we make decisions, God, that we know that it's your decision, that it's the right one, that we don't rush into things. I know I've done that, God, and I, I really want to just completely rely on you and your knowledge. I really don't want to rely on me and my, no my knowledge. So, Heavenly Father, just let that Holy Spirit blow through this church into all of us. Thank you, God, for your Son, Jesus Christ, who came to this earth for one reason, and that was to save us, a bunch of sinful people. But we just thank you for this greatest gift that you've ever given us. And now let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And our last song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Boy, isn't that the truth? Page 465. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.